Shalom, beloved. A word. Before we begin the prayer, beloved. Yah of my ancestors, Yahweh of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. We ask that that anointing come down upon us as we pray, expecting from the gift from the Holy Spirit. Open our eyes that we may receive thy word as thou hast given. And bless us, Father, as we become a blessing to others, honoring, glorifying, and praising your holy word, your Holy Spirit, and giving all honor and praise unto you. We thank you this day and forevermore for all that you give to us. Your son, Yeshua HaMashiach said, feed my sheep. Let this meal anoint and fill their spirits, Father, and keep us as we follow. Now and forevermore, glory, hallelujah. Thank you, bless you, and praise thy mighty name. In the name of Yeshua HaMashiach, amen. Beloved, I was reading in the book of Acts chapter eight, and I'm gonna begin where the angel of the Lord spake unto Philip. We're in the book of Acts chapter eight, starting at the 26th verse. And the angel of the Lord spake unto Philip saying, arise and go toward the south unto the way that goeth down from Jerusalem unto Gaza, which is desert. We know that this was intended and anointed by the Most High because it's the Lord's angel that is touching and speaking to Philip as he sends him on his way. And he arose and went and behold, a man of Ethiopia, a eunuch of great authority under Candace, queen of the Ethiopians, who had the charge of all her treasures and had come to Jerusalem for to worship. So we know that the eunuch followed Judaism. We also know that he was the treasurer of the queen of Ethiopia. The name Candace is equal to calling someone Pharaoh or Caesar. It is a common title for a royal. He's the treasurer of the queen, but he is also a eunuch. As we look on the board that I'm sharing, a eunuch is a man who has been castrated. Eunuchs would usually serve, be servants or slaves who had been castrated to make them reliable servants of a royal court where physical access to the royal could wield great influence, great influence. So, we understand he is the treasurer of the queen of Ethiopia. He had charge of all her treasure and he had come to Jerusalem to worship. He was returning and sitting in his chariot as he read Isaiah the prophet. Then the spirit said unto Philip, go near and join thyself to this chariot. Philip ran thither to him and heard him read the prophet Isaiah and said, Understandest thou what thou readest? And he said, how can I except some man should guide me? And he desired Philip that he would come up and sit with him. And the place of the scripture which he read was this. He was led as a sheep to the slaughter and like a lamb dumb before his shearer. So opened he not his mouth. In his humiliation, his judgment was taken away. And who shall declare his generation? for his life was taken from the earth. And the eunuch answered Philip and said, I pray thee of whom speaketh the prophet of this, of himself or of some other man? Then Philip opened his mouth and began at the same scripture and preached unto him Jesus, Yeshua HaMashiach. And as they went on their way, they came unto a certain water. And the eunuch said, see, here is water, what doth hinder me to be baptized? And Philip said, if thou believest with all thine heart, thou mayest. And he answered and said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the son of God. 
And he commanded the chariot to stand still, and they went down both into the water, both Philip and the eunuch, and he baptized him. And when they would come up out of the water, the Philip of the spirit of the Lord caught Philip away, that the eunuch saw him no more, and he went his way rejoicing. Yes, beloved, we are talking about the angel of the Lord sending Philip to talk to the eunuch. The eunuch is a man that is castrated, normally having his testes removed. So we know that under physical terms, he could not bear children. He could not give life to a woman or reproduce, okay? He arose and behold, a man of Ethiopia. We know he was out of Ethiopia and they were following Judaism. We know at least the eunuch was because he had come to Jerusalem to worship. Now, one of the things that I also wanted to speak on is the fact that many of us, when we think about the way the world teaches us, Many of us will think that the Most High can't use us, that something about us that is lacking, that we can't do the job, the appointment that the Most High has given us, that we're not like other people. But you see, according to the word of the Most High in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 1, starting at the 27th verse. But God has chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. And God has chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things which are mighty. And the base things of the world and things which are despised has Yah chosen, yea, and things which are not to bring to naught things that are that no flesh should glory in his presence. Here is a man that does not have the ability to give life. Here is a man that is being given charge of all the treasures of the queen of Ethiopia. But you see, we know according to the word of the most high that Yah does above and beyond anything we could ever hope or imagine. And when we look through our spiritual eye, we are going to watch Yahuwah turn and flip the script on the situation. Yah will use those things which are despised. He will use those things that are weak. Many people would assume a eunuch cannot give life. He doesn't have the ability to, to, to transform for his seed from himself to another to reproduce life. And yet it is this exact same man, this eunuch who is under Candace, the queen of Ethiopia, who once he speaks to Philip, the angel of the Lord sending him, he is endued with the seed of life itself being the word of the most high. He was already a believer of Judaism, but he had not heard, he did not know about Yeshua HaMashiach. But now he has the word of life. We look in the book of Luke chapter eight, verse 11, and we see the seed is the word of God. The seed, the seed that the sower came and sowed is the word of God. This man is filled with seed. Now, life-giving, reproducing seed. Who? This eunuch that according to the physical realm could not produce life. And yet he is the exact one who is close to the queen. Eunuchs would usually be servants or slaves who had been castrated to make them reliable servants of a royal court where physical access to the ruler could wield great influence. He's got influence. Yes, yes, yes. But you see, 
the physical seat that he had in him, that physical seat had been cut off. He could not transfer it to another woman and produce. And yet the exact thing in the physical that he could not do, Yahuwah endued him in the spiritual with the word of the most high. And he chose a man that was close to the queen, influential. And he would use that word, that seed of life, not just life to bring about physical life that would sustain life because we know the word of the most high gives us long life. It can even bring riches because the first thing that we learn is fear the Lord, which is wisdom. Wisdom bringeth long life. It also brings riches. So he's gaining the wisdom of the truth of the word, and it is a living seed inside of him. It is a living seed inside of him. He's near the queen of Ethiopia. He's got charge of all her treasures, all her treasures. But what we don't know, or she doesn't know, the treasure he's bringing back is greater than any treasure of hers he's holding because he has the gift of everlasting life with that word, that seed inside of him. About Yeshua HaMashiach, beloved. Here we see Yahuwah flipping the script. There are people among us, brothers and sisters, that we go through things in this life and according to the physical, the physical says no. But you have to remember in the most high is yes and amen. Yes and amen. You see, that eunuch was a life-giving vessel. Not only could he help sustain life in the physical by helping people follow the word of life, but in the spiritual, he was transformed and bringing pure seed. He was starting at one of the highest females in the land. He was beside that queen, who the queen of Ethiopia. Okay. Behold a man of Ethiopia, a eunuch of great authority. Yes. So we know that people are going to listen to him. The angel of the Lord sent Philip to him. He's under Candace, queen of Ethiopia, who had charge of all her treasure. But you see, Yahuwah being who he is, who works above and beyond anything we could ever hope for or imagine. One would think when he first returned, there's that man that's got all that great treasure of the queen, never understanding that he was coming back with a greater treasure that belonged to the king of kings and the lord of lords he was given charge over uh, another treasure a greater treasure the seed of life the word of life itself beloved many of us and there are some and i know we're struggling there are people struggling because of your shortcomings but you have to understand Yahuwah is, there's nothing impossible for him. Nothing, beloved. Those things that you believe keep you from succeeding can be the exact things Yah uses on all points to put you where you need to be. He was holding the queen's treasure, all her treasure, according to the book of Acts, this eunuch, this castrated man that could not give life and reproduce was given the word of life, carried a great seed now because he was going to Jerusalem to worship. He was studying the word of God, but he needed somebody to make him understand. And at that exact time, right after the death, the Ascension, the, the rising of Yeshua HaMashiach, he runs into Philip because the spirit of the Lord, the angel of the Lord sent him to him. Here's a eunuch 
that according to other men, he might be by the queen, but he don't have any life in him. He can't do anything. But remember, when you draw unto the most high, when you speak his words, you draw all men, all women unto you. This same said eunuch left unable to give life. But when he returned, he was full of seed. And not only was he in charge of the queen's treasure, he was bringing the queen a treasure that she did not have. There's no gold, there's no diamond, there's no silver, there's no ruby, there's no gem as great or as valuable as the treasure inside his earthen vessel. That instead of him holding it, because the spirit flips it on its script. He was coming back to give it away. We are going to look at who is Candace, beloved. We are going to look at who is Candace. This is just a little bit of the history. Forgive me as I try to shrink this. This is the queen of the Ethiopians, Ethiopians whose eunuch or chamberlain was converted to Christianity by or through a divinely ordained meeting with Philip, the evangelist. Yes, yes. The country which she ruled was called by the Greeks, Moray, in Upper Nubia. It was long the center of commercial trade between Africa and the south of Asia and thus became famous for its wealth. And we see that that is spoken about in the book of Isaiah. It is somewhat singular that female sovereignty seems to have prevailed in Ethiopia, the name Candace, you can compare it to Pharaoh, Ptolemy, Caesar, being a title common to several successive queens. It is probable that Judaism had taken root in Ethiopia at this time, and hence the visit of the queen's treasurer to Jerusalem to keep the feast. There is a tradition that Candace was herself converted to Christianity by her treasurer on his return, and that he became an apostle of Christianity in that whole region, carrying it also to Abyssinia. It is said he also preached the gospel in Arabia, Felix, and in Selene, where he suffered martyrdom. Beloved, when the Yahuwah wants to do a mighty work, he can have you in a position and in a condition that where you think certain sides of your life are done. There are females, there are males who may never have had a child and believe they can never have a child. But you see, you're filled with that seed. The seed is the word of God. And just like that eunuch, here is a man who left incapable of giving life, but returned with the word of life able to transform lives through the knowledge and the spirit of anointing on him that people should have life everlasting through their faith, through their faith. And where the queen, when he left and the queen was in such a high position that he looked to her in the end, when he returned, Yahuwah raised him up where he brought that queen to the king of kings. Beloved, I wanted to share this with you because many of you, again, let me say, and now we're in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 27, but God has chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. How in the world did a eunuch come back? And people are running and begging and believing and crying and praising and worshiping because he's transferring eternal life through the word of the most high. He's got a seed that never dies, a seed that is everlasting inside of him. God has chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. And God has chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things which are mighty. Here is a man, you close to the queen. Well, other men that may have gotten jealous and thought things about the queen, he can't do nothing. And yet now he's speaking words so wise, so powerful, so life-giving, words that no other man spoke to that queen. And he did, in fact, birth 
life in her and life everlasting and gave it to multiples because he allowed the power of the most high to work through him, through that word of God. The seed is the word of Yah. Yes, beloved. Yes, yes, yes. We know who that queen is. We know through the book of Acts that here is a eunuch, a castrated man, who returned with the seed, the word of the most high in him, potent, powerful, full of faith, giving it to the queen, giving it to all because he was influential. He willed a great influence below. And where he held all her treasures, all her treasures, that good and faithful servant to whom much is given, much is required. Well, to whom he who has even more shall be given. Well, we see it again in this unit. Yahuwah gave him a treasure, a treasure that never once dry. That no, he didn't hoard it, keep it, guard it. He was giving it away. And as he gave it away, it grew more and more and more. Beloved, this day, we repent of our sins. We ask Father to have mercy on us and wash us in the glorious blood of the Lamb. Let his word walk with us, talk with us. And as Yeshua told Peter, feed my sheep, feed my sheep. That unit went forth and fed the sheep of the Most High. So never feel as though you're not good enough. Never feel as though what else? can I do? Because Yahuwah can take you from a lowly position and raise you on high if you follow him. And the exact thing that you think is your weakness becomes your strength. That eunuch that could not have physical children ended up using, allowing that word of the most high, that seed of life to come through him and literally became an apostle. He helped save the queen. He saved the empire. He spread that word throughout. Yes, beloved. This is a word of encouragement. This is a word because somebody needs it. Somebody needs to know. It doesn't matter what your position is. It doesn't matter what your weaknesses are. That exact weakness can become your strength. A word, beloved. This is the word that the Lord gave to me as I read it and it started expounding through the spirit that he used that unit and put the seed of life in him through the word of the Most High. That he would go out and birth seed. He would also have not only was he holding all the queen's treasures, but a treasure had been put in him that he would give freely to the queen and to all who came before him, that their faith would save them and let them see life and life everlasting because they do believe Yahshua is the son of the most high, that he died was crucified, rose after three days, and now sits on the right hand of power. Yes, beloved. The weak things, the things that are despised. Yes, 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 yes. The foolish things, that's the things he uses. And when we look at that unit, we can see it well. He left guarding a treasure, but he came back filled with the greatest treasure of them all everlasting life. He left a eunuch unable to give life or procreate, but he returned full of seed, giving it away, spreading it, and increasing fruit. That tree whose leaf never grows old, never withers. He became that tree by rivers of living water, whose leaf was always green, bearing fruit as he spread that word. Yes, beloved. Yahuwah has a job for you today, beloved. 
Don't look at those things that you think are your weaknesses because it is those exact weaknesses Yahuwah will work through and show his strength. This is a word of encouragement, beloved, to let you know. Yah gave me that revelation and I wanted to share it with you. Again, many of us think I'm too old, I'm sickly, I have a disability, I don't have that much money, I'm young, people don't understand me, I'm not as educated as other people, neither was Peter and many of the apostles, and yet they were those chosen vessels, they became sacred in the sight of the Most High, he can use whomever he will, and as we spread this word of life, that Yeshua is the son of the most high, that he came down, preached his word, the word of Yah, died and after three days rose from the grave because the grave could not hold him. Believing in your hearts, confessing with your mouth, sharing that word and all the glory and the goodness that the most high has done for you and others around you. And now you too will be filled with that seed of life, beloved. A word, shalom.